It is so cold in this apartment. I need to figure this out because these windows have just drafts everywhere. So hot tea it is. I am so excited for today's video. I'm gonna be ranking all the eyeshadow palettes that I tried in the year of 2021. So if you're curious to hear my thoughts on every single palette that was new to me last year, then please keep on watching. Oh boy, this was a feat. I went through my eyeshadow palette collection, pulled out every single palette I tried last year for the first time. So palettes that were new to me, not necessarily new to the market, and I'm ranking them today. And this was really hard. I can only imagine how much harder this would have been if I actually tried every single palette I purchased last year, because I probably have just as many palettes sitting around waiting to be tried for the first time. But that's a topic for another day. Today, we're gonna be ranking all of the eyeshadow palettes that I have tried in the year of 2021 from the one that impressed me the least to my ultimate favorites. I have 24 palettes in front of me, well to the side of me. I'm not gonna show them yet because I already have them organized in order so that would kind of give things away wouldn't it? But we do have 24 palettes to talk about so we should really get going. Really quick before we get started, if you're new to my channel Welcome, thank you so much for clicking on this video. If you are returning, thank you so much for spending some of your time with me today. I really, really appreciate it. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Natalia. I am a concert pianist and a beauty lover. I started my YouTube channel two years ago with a no buy year in 2020. I attempted a low buy in 2021, clearly by the fact that we are ranking 24 eyeshadow palettes and those are not the only ones I've purchased purchased last year. You can gather that my low buy was not a grand success. So this year I am regrouping, I'm going back to my roots, I'm kind of doing a hybrid I guess of no buy low buy slash a year of less stuff. I've been trying to figure out exactly what this year is going to bring and honestly I just don't know. I just know that I want to bring in less, I want to declutter, I want to love my collection and use more of what I have have and discover what I like and what I don't. So if that all sounds good to you and you'd like to go on this journey alongside me, then I would love it if you would subscribe. And without further ado, let's get to ranking these 24 eyeshadow palettes that I tried in 2021. All right, so as I just mentioned, clearly my low buy last year went up in flames to such an extent that here we are ranking only some of the ones I purchased because I didn't even get around to a whole bunch of them. But the one that I did get to try and I'm not one for disclaimers I know you know everybody usually does the usual disclaimers of you know if I'm ranking something really low and it's your favorite or if I'm ranking something really high and you hate it then please don't get offended we are all different lovers of makeup we have different styles different preferences different skin tones different skin types all of that usually I don't get into all that because I just I don't know I feel like that should be self-explanatory I feel like we need to all just grow up but I will give a different disclaimer <laughs> and that is I didn't really try any horrible palettes which is great right which is great but it made my job really really hard here because I honestly don't know how I'm gonna feel about any of these palettes six months or a year down the line once I've used them even more. They might swap around due to preference, they might swap around due to the fact that I haven't even given them that much chance yet up to now because since we're on the topic of disclaimers, here's another one. I don't wear makeup that often to begin with and 2021 was probably one of my worst years in recent history for makeup wearing because it, it was it was a very challenging year starting September when I had to move and my entire life changed in many ways from September to like beginning of January which is when I sat down to film again for the first time I wore makeup maybe four or five times and like three of those were for performances I tried all of these I want to say more than once maybe there's a couple of palettes here that I have only tried once and I will honestly tell you guys that but it's not like I've used any of these palettes more than say 10 times please take all this with a grain of salt this is all for fun I've always wanted to do a big ranking video and a lot of people usually do these in December of whatever year we're in but I wasn't filming yet and I didn't get a chance to do that so I'm doing it now because I still wanna 
um so yeah all the disclaimers i think are done i guess if anything comes up along the way we will talk about it let's do this in 24th spot i have a palette by mark jacobs this is the fanta scene palette i bought this at tg maxx now i'm trying to remember did i actually buy all of these or get all of these in 2021 or did i just try them for the first time in 2021 to be honest i'm not 100% sure i'm pretty sure i bought all of these unless they were gifted which they are a few in 2021 so we're just gonna go with that hopefully i am not incorrect so this one i got at tg maxx it's a beautiful color story because i do gravitate towards these sort of shades you know brown neutral pinky peachy shades i am uh, fair and they tend to look good on me but i'll be honest even for me this palette just didn't have the oomph i I live with elephants upstairs, apparently. I am not one to discriminate. I love neutrals. I love color. I love actually mixing the two of them together. So maybe that's why this palette appealed to me possibly the least out of everything. Although, as I said, I didn't really try anything terrible. Like even this palette, I used it. I wasn't wowed by it, but I liked it. Whatever look I created, I'm sure it was quite pretty. It's just not, it doesn't stand out. I didn't like look at this palette now months later, because as I said, with very few exceptions, I haven't really worn most of these palettes since mid-September. I think I did use this once during the holidays maybe and it was cute but i'm gonna leave this in the 24th spot for now and i'll keep using it and maybe in the future this little palette will change my mind okay now um there's gonna be a bunch of wet and wild palettes because i saw a video sometime in 2021 towards the beginning of the year i want to say that mandy lee did and she was raving about these new wet and wild or new at the time wet and wild eyeshadow palettes and because they were like three dollars and five dollars depending on the size and then i think wet and wild was having like a 50 percent off sale or something i bought one two three four five six seven i bought eight of them and i think they're only like 10 or 12 in total i was actually working on a video where i was gonna rank these separately and i was wearing these a lot during the summer i was photographing and recording the looks and that was going to be a video that i would have posted sometime in the fall but I left YouTube for a while, so that never happened. So I just decided at this point, considering they're old news, to go ahead and put them all into this video. Maybe in the future, I will still do a separate ranking because I've recently picked up a few other Wet n Wild palettes and I hope to do a video on like all the eyeshadow palettes and a few other things that I bought in 2021 and never got a chance to use yet, just so you guys know what I have and let me know what you want to see videos on. But let's keep going. 23 is the Wet n wild new walking on eggshells palette they used to have an og one of this and it was beautiful the shimmers were so impactful this honestly this was meh in fact maybe i should have even swapped this one around with the mark jacobs i feel like actually the mark jacobs uh gave me a slightly more interesting look than this one i think the reason for why i put this one notch higher is because it's just such an easy palette right this is like you're on the go at least for my skin color i have everything i could possibly need and want in here to create the fastest look possible throw this in my bag and if i need to do makeup in the car like in five minutes or something this could be a good candidate for that so i don't know because of that i kind of gave it a little bit more of a benefit of the doubt but this was definitely not a standout from all of these little palettes that wet and wild reformulated and came out with last okay. year in that vein the next one is also a wet and wild palette also the five pan and this is the petalette petalette palette this is the pink one i don't think i loved the quality of this one i'll be honest i don't remember exactly how it performed but i have this recollection that i struggled with this one more than even with some of the other ones we've already talked about how i do like all of these palettes so i can create a cute look with this but for these shades this would not usually be my go-to at this point i have 
clearly enough makeup where I can create a look like this with other palettes and I'm probably going to enjoy the experience much more. So for that reason, this is in the 22nd spot. I actually do like mauves and pinks and purples. So for me, this is definitely a nice color story. I just didn't love the quality. Okay, this is gonna be an unpopular opinion and this was generously gifted to me. Well, I won it in a giveaway, but unfortunately I didn't really enjoy this palette. This is the Natasha Denona Mini Zendo palette. I know, I know. You're not supposed to say anything bad about Natasha. She is my namesake after all. I, I didn't love this. I really didn't love this. I mean, this one I feel like already has hard pan. It was really hard to pick up. I didn't think the payoff was good enough for the brand's reputation. Would the looks pretty? Sure. Are there some shades in here I think are great quality? Yes, but only like 60% of them. Um, because as I said, I really didn't like this shade, whatever it is. What is that? Can I see? Can I tell? Everything's reflective. Oh my gosh, wow. Let's see, stark, bare, Stripped, Daz, and Uncovered. So I guess it's the Daz. This would be the Daz shade. Sorry, I've been trying to figure out these shade names and because of the ring light and the reflective packaging, I can't read any of this. Daz was not my favorite. And I think the other one that I had a little bit of trouble with, if I remember correctly, was this deep shade here, which is what? Stark? Oh, I don't know. Anyway, you guys can see it. <sighs> This one I tried several times too, because I was like, what do you mean you don't like this Natasha Denona palette? Natalia, I mean, seriously, how could that happen? I really wanted to love this thing. And I didn't. Is it horrible? No. Will I continue to use it? Yeah. But not nearly as often as some of my other palettes. And eventually, maybe I won't actually, because as I discover more and more of my own collection, I'm going to want to use the good stuff. So yeah, Mini Zendo was, was not my jam. Okay, back to some Wet n Wild palettes. This is the Sundays palette. I used this in the summer a couple of times and I loved the looks I created with this, which is why it actually is higher than even the Natasha Denona mini Zendo. I had a summer shirt that I wore quite a lot. I think I even have some Instagram photos in that shirt. And there's another palette that's coming up that I used to wear with that shirt. It has like these same tones and everything. It's just so fun. It has these warm oranges and terracottas. The quality was okay, but I just think the color story is so fun and reminds me of summer. So that's why this one is in the 21st place. No, sorry. 20th place. Okay, next is the uh, one of the 10 pen palettes. This is the Heart and Soul. And again, the quality is not the most fantastic throughout. That is the issue I had with these Wet n Wild palettes. I actually enjoyed every single one, but uh, not a single one of them to me felt consistent in the quality. Like some of the shades were phenomenal, some of the shades were mediocre, and there would always be like one dud. That's why these are ranking a bit lower. But as far as color stories, especially for drugs, store and the price you can't beat the price like I got this what on sale for 250 or something like that I think the color stories are great I think you can create a lot of fun looks with any of these palettes really I'm just ranking them based on the looks that I got to create and my experience using these palettes like for example I loved that center shade but you can probably tell that it was quite flaky and uh, had a lot of kick up some of the other ones were clearly a different formula and held up much better. On the flip side of the critique that I am giving to a lot of these Wet n Wild palettes, the one nice thing about them is that they do all have quite a few different formulas and textures and finishes. So again, for the drugstore, that is unusual and rare, so it's kind of cool to see that Wet n Wild is trying to do that at their price point. Okay, and then the next one is Lights Off, and this one won over the other one because I think these cool tones are really something special for the drugstore, especially in this combination. I created like a really dramatic look. I think it was in my, oh gosh, I don't remember the video. I really like the color story. I like the fact that I have some cool tones because I don't have that many palettes that are cool tone. Like I don't have the Natasha Denona Glam palette or a ColourPop, whatever it is, like Stone Fox. 
I don't have a lot of cool tones. Let's leave it there. So for me, this is really fun. It's just, again, not all shades here are created equal. Some of them I did struggle with a bit. Some of them really became too flaky and had a lot of fallout. But I think, I don't know, I think the effort was worth it though for the fact that the looks that I did with this palette, the couple of times I used it, did come out pretty cool. The next palette might also be a bit of an unpopular opinion, and this might change because I've only used this palette, I want to say, two or three times. One time actually for the stage and a couple of other times, but I know a lot of people really love this palette. I know a lot of people rank this really high in their 2021 wrap-up, and this is the ColourPop Lush Life palette. I think the color story is so fun so so fun but i have to say i struggled with this one i don't know i didn't feel like the mattes were easy to blend i felt like even the shimmers were not like as smooth and creamy and punchy as i would have wanted them to be maybe what it is is this palette got so much hype from the few people that i watch and usually agree with or at least really admire their makeup looks and therefore listen to their feedback very closely maybe i just expected something so extraordinary and it just didn't live up to the expectation i love the packaging i as i said i love the color story so this palette is not going anywhere i want to test it out out some more because maybe I just don't understand it yet and haven't figured out how to best use it but at this moment it's not ranking very high and then we have the wet n wild nude awakening palette this palette is ranking a little bit higher than a lot of the others just because it's easy to use this one is one of the easier ones to use it doesn't have as many creative formulas it doesn't have as many shades that have like some unique textures or some fun glitter specks in them or maybe even a bit of a duochrome effect but it has it has ease and versatility for what it is. It's a great neutral palette. No frills, no bells and whistles, but if that's what you're into, you're on a budget and you can find this thing on sale for 50% off, especially like I did. I mean, you can't beat a solid on the go neutral palette for 250, right? So that's why that is number 16. Now, this next palette in the 15th place, it's kind of starting off already the part where I really, really enjoy all of these palettes, not equally, but this, this got really, really hard. And with this palette, the only two reasons I am ranking it a bit lower than some of the other ones is because I've only used it a couple of times so i'm still getting to know it and because i don't know i expected i think a little bit more again for what it is it is a basic neutral palette for what it is i think it is super beautiful because it's going to be super easy to use and it's going to be one i reach for on those days where i don't have time to sit and be creative and come up with something interesting i just need to know exactly what i'm doing make it happen and move on with my life i i guess i expected to just put this on my eyes and somehow be so mesmerized and the palette i'm talking about is a wayne goss palette this is the luxury eye palette in imperial topaz this was a very very generous gift from a subscriber i just realized i never asked her if she is okay with me mentioning who she is so i'm gonna for now keep it anonymous but you know who you are and thank you so much i'm still in disbelief and i do love this palette and i will gladly continue using it but i i just expect it to be wowed and i was just happy but not wowed i don't usually use black very often so for me that is not a shade i care about too much and then other than that there's really only one matte and of course then the rest are these beautiful satins and shimmers so maybe that's what it is i'm like in a stage of my life where i still love exploring different color combinations and i'm not one who creates the same go-to look on a daily basis because my go-to look on a daily basis is no makeup if that's going to be like my basic no go-to makeup look so if i'm going to take the time and put in the effort of 
doing makeup, I usually do like to get a little creative and do something different each time, even if it is neutral and simple. And I feel like with this palette, I would have to create like a go-to look and reach into this just for that because I don't feel like there's all that much I could do here. But the quality is great. The packaging and the feel and just the overall aesthetic of this palette, the beveling and the, the way in the mirror is played, it, it's gorgeous. And I am so thrilled that I have it because I wanted this palette for such a long time. I think it came out in 2020 when I was on my no by year, so I couldn't get it. So I am I am so, so happy to have it and I will continue to use it and love on it, but it just, I guess I just expected something miraculous and instead I got something really, really solid. We are on to another Marc Jacobs palette. I picked up quite a few of these apparently at TJ Maxx last year. This is the Cherific palette. This one I liked a lot more than that first one I showed you guys, the Fantasine one, because there is more depth here, because there is a topper shade that's really cool. I really, really love this like satin. Sh I don't think it's a, well, it could be a metallic, like a Marc Jacobs metallic, not like an indie brand metallic. There's more variety in terms of the mattes here. So I just liked the look and the experience of using this palette much more so. That's why this one is ranking in the 14th spot. And I do find the quality of these palettes to be consistent for the most part and very easy to use. They just blend in so easily and quickly. Once I picked up one Marc Jacobs palette and actually tried it, when I would see other ones in TJ Maxx, I just couldn't resist because I know I really do enjoy them. Next, we have another palette that was gifted by the same wonderful person who gave me the Wayne Goss palette. And that's the Anastasia. Norvina, the original Norvina palette. I have wanted this thing ever since it came out. And last year it was on sale in the 21 Days of Beauty event. I did a video on it and I talked about how I was seriously considering picking up this palette. And this lovely subscriber of mine reached out to me and said, hey, I actually happen to have one that I would like to send to you instead of you purchasing it. And I, I was blown away. I've used this a few times. I used it almost immediately when I got it. I was so excited to use it. And I have to say, I am really enjoying it so far. The only reason it's again, not higher is because I just have so many good ones coming up at this point. I know it's an old one, but I am so happy to have it now and I'm still like I still haven't used absolutely every single shade so I am looking forward to what else I can create with this one. Is it revolutionary as far as the color story? No but it's good quality. It has I think enough variety where it is really fun but at the same time you can go in here and do something really easy and basic and uh, I love the packaging. I love the color. I love everything about it. This actually came to me as a gift from my dear friend Rupi at the end of 2020. And I can't remember if I already tried it at the end of 2020 or if I tried it at the very beginning of 2021, but I, I really wanted to put it in here. I really, really do love this palette and it brings me such great feels and memories. And I am so grateful that Rupi gifted this to me. And that's the BH Pistachio palette from their sweet shop collection. As I'm sure a lot of you have heard, Beach has recently filed for bankruptcy, so who knows what's going to happen with them, but I acquired a lot of BH in 2021, and I was going to spend the month of September and October trying all of those palettes out and then doing a big roundup and review and ranking, and I never got to do any of that because I left YouTube during that time period, but I do have those palettes and I do still plan on using them. Obviously, this point with BH being in such a questionable position. Will I actually do a dedicated videos to that? Probably not, but I would still like to try all those palettes that I got. But this was my first more recent BH palette once their new formulas have started to get a lot of hype. And I really wanted at least one of these for the longest time. And I do love greens and repeat definitely knew that. So she got me this one. I have to say it's so fun. It's so beautiful. I mean, if you're a green lover, this has so many different greens. You can really do a lot with this. I have been seeing them at TJ Maxx 
these palettes. So if you missed out and you want to get one or two of these, I think they're like $6 at TJ Maxx. Is it as versatile as some of my other palettes? No, but it's not supposed to be. It's a monochromatic palette. I am not one I've realized for reaching into my monochromatic palettes a lot, but this is one that I am so thrilled I have and that I definitely want to explore even further. Now, speaking of monochromatic-ish, <laughs> the palette I'm ranking in 11th place is another Wet n Wild palette and this one is the Call Me Sunshine palette. I really, really like this one. This one I think is my highest rated 10 pan. It was not the easiest one to use. I will tell you that. A lot of the palettes I just mentioned a few slots below have much better formulas and had really really good user experience. But the looks I've created with this, I think I've only used it twice, but I remember both of those looks. They were just so pretty. They really were. There are so many different textures in this thing. And while there are gonna be tons of brands that do this so much better, like indie brands, for a drugstore, you're not gonna find, I think, this variety of textures in any other drugstore brand other than I don't know no I mean I haven't tried maybe there maybe it's out there but I haven't tried any other drugstore palettes that actually have this level of variety as far as formulas and textures colors yeah I mean it's beautiful it's a beautiful neutral warm palette but this is not something we haven't seen before some of these shades have almost like a dual chrome effect some of them have that more flaky reflective quality like that one I just feel like this is really unique for the drugstore so that's why it is in the 11th spot and similarly to that in the 10th spot is the my lucky charm five pan palette now I was debating whether to rank this lower but I also realized that this palette has been through a lot and I've moved the problem I have with this palette is these gorgeous shades that put it in the 10th place are also the ones that are breaking and flaking and constantly creating a mess inside this little palette. I don't know if you can tell, but they're just like particles. As I dig my finger straight in. I just dug my finger straight into one of these. This one is super messy. And for that, I was going to rank it lower, but it could be because, you know, they've moved and all sorts of things have happened in my life and maybe it's not the shadow's fault. This shade is the most unique thing I have ever seen the drugstore create because it is this dark green blue shade, but what makes it extra cool is all the different colored sparkles in there. It's stunning. It's messy. So that makes me a bit upset. And also I love some of these other shades. This is just not a color story you're going to get at the drugstore every day. So for that reason, this is in the 10th spot. In the ninth place, I have probably one of my favorite palettes that I tried in 2021, and it was going to rank actually considerably higher as I was preparing for this video. And I opened it and went to close it, and the clasp no longer works. And I've heard people complain about these palettes for that reason, but I've never experienced it myself until today. So I got really mad, and I bumped it down to number nine. And I'm talking about the Marc Jacobs Fine Grind palette you know for somebody that said like i never have go-to looks no i guess i'll stand by that but if i wanted a neutral look this is the palette i would go to i've used this several times and considering again how little i've worn makeup that's saying something i bought this one also at tj maxx and i love this palette there's something about this palette i think maybe because there's deeper mattes in here so i really can manipulate them any way i want i can go in light-handed and just create a wash i can deepen things up i love all three shimmers i love that they are bolder and also a little bit deeper for me this is the ultimate neutral palette for going out for doing something that's a little more sultry and smoky and maybe that's not going to be the case if you're much darker than i am maybe for you this will become just a basic neutral palette but i don't feel like i have anything like this where in one palette i get all of these darker neutrals the ease of Marc jacobs it's just so reliable for me i don't know i know not a lot of people love Marc jacobs palettes especially now that 
that I don't even know if they're around. I've always really enjoyed these palettes and this one is no exception except for this stupid clasp that no longer now closes. So I don't know how to store this thing without drying out these shadows and also like seriously, what is that about? I was angry. I was angry. I think this palette was going to be in like fourth place originally and I was like, uh-uh, no. Not anymore, you're not. Number eight was the first of several BH palettes that I bought to, well, it wasn't maybe the first one I bought, but it was the first one I started using a lot over the summer in preparation for what I hoped would be a bunch of videos on this whole entire collection. And this is the travel series that BH Cosmetics did. And this is the Summer in Saint Tropez palette. I think this one I actually found at TJ Maxx, but there was a bunch of others I bought on the BH website and I started with this one because it was summertime and I thought well can there be a more perfect summer color story and I have to say I really enjoyed playing with this palette is it ever going to be like one of those my all-time favorite top 10 palettes mm -mm, I don't think so I really don't think so because I don't think there's enough neutrals in here as far as mattes are concerned for me to be able to reach into this on a regular basis because the only neutral matte really is this one that would be up my alley I would have loved to have something darker than that but for really fun colorful looks you've got a bunch of colorful mattes you know the red the blue the deep blue the yellow the peach and the shimmers the shimmers are so pretty there's like a couple of duochromes in here maybe even more than a couple I had so much fun with this palette which is why I had to put it pretty high on this ranking it might not stay that high as far as my collection is concerned in the future because I don't think this is an all year round palette for me or or very versatile as far as more neutral looks are concerned, but I really had a blast. You know, next palette, interestingly enough, while it is in a really good spot, seventh place out of 24, considering I actually enjoyed all of these palettes, is pretty darn good. But I have to say, I somehow, I expected this to be like my ultimate favorite palette because it was so raved about back in, was it 2019 or 2020? I've wanted this palette for the longest time. And by now I have some bittersweet memories with it because it was a gift. But even before, even before, before I had different personal attachments to this palette. I tried it at the very start of 2021 because it was a Christmas gift uh, back in 2020 and I wasn't blown away immediately. I mean, as I've used it more and as I've realized the color potential of this palette, I've definitely bumped it up. But honestly, I didn't even think it would be this high up initially in my ranking. And I'm talking about the Lunar Beauty Moonspell palette. Now, packaging, if we were going off of packaging, would this win? Yeah, this this prob this would win. If we were going off of packaging, I think this would win. And honestly, even Color Story. I mean, Color Story is gorgeous. Absolutely stunning. But I don't know if... I maybe just still don't quite understand what kind of shimmers and what kind of mattes I love. I just, I didn't have the most incredible experience using it. I just felt like I struggled a bit with this palette. So I definitely want to revisit it many more times before I make up my mind about it as far as like, you know, all of my palettes are concerned and what I prefer and what I don't. But somehow, even though it's in seventh place, I'm over here basically saying I was kind of disappointed in it. I don't know, I thought this was going to be something, again, just so magical and so incredible that it was going to put every spell on me imaginable. And while I really, really enjoy it, and while at this point um, I will never get rid of it, it's not necessarily for quality reasons and like, basically it's not necessarily for makeup reasons, is what I'm trying to say. In sixth place, we have Pat McGrath. This is what, the Divine Rose... Two. This is Mothership. I never know the numbers. This is Mothership 8, the Divine Rose 2 palette. This is something I won in a giveaway. So this was so exciting. My goodness. I mean, this palette is basically like infamous here on the tube. And 
I really enjoyed using it. It's in sixth place because the couple of times I've used it, it has been so fun and obviously the quality so far has definitely impressed me. I was at first going to rank it a little bit lower to be honest, mainly because I don't feel like I've used it enough to have a good enough opinion considering the price of this palette. So in the future, I would like to come back and revisit my thoughts on this one in a couple of other Pat McGrath palettes that I have recently acquired and haven't tried yet that is you know something that hopefully in the future i will do a video on it's pat mcgrath the color story is stunning those special shades oh my god that's the one that has the multi-chrome in it what is that called the the extraterrestrial or something like that i don't even know where is my little card anymore that's one of the things i mean it's a 125 dollar palette why can we not engrave the shade names somehow in there i think it's a legit question no oh no i do have the little thing I do, it's in the box. Yeah, it's the the VR sextraterrestrial shade, you know, this multi-chrome right here that I'm sure you guys have seen. It's a beautiful palette and I need to use it more. So there's that. All right, we're in the top five, everyone. So that is exciting. I have no idea. How long have I been here? <laughs> thank you. If you're still here, thank you. Thank you so much. If you're still here, I don't know, you need some sort of a prize. Maybe we need to like drop down uh, one of those like trophy emojis or something in the comments <laughs> to let me know you're still here. Fifth place is none other than Natasha Denona. This is her Trio Chrome palette packaging. Pa uh, packaging is stunning, multi-chrome packaging with some multi-chrome shades. I don't have too many indie shadows and I don't have any indie multi-chromes. So while these are not phenomenal multi-chromes, for me, they are extra special because that means I actually have some. The mattes, the mattes are beautiful. I haven't used a few of these still. They're like brand new and untouched, but I will. You will still see tons of looks on this in the future. I'm so excited to use this palette some more. It had to be in the top Top five. This was one of those like love at first use, even though I haven't used all of it yet. I just know, I know we're gonna have a good thing going on. Fourth place, Huda Beauty Mercury Retrograde. This was a palette I had wanted since it came out, which I think happened right before my no buy year, but I resisted uh, $67, it was expensive. And then it kept going on sale a few times. I think once during my no buy year and I was so upset I couldn't pick it up. And then it I think went on sale again and I resisted because I was still trying to stick to my low buy at that time. And then I think it was, was it in the spring of 2021, like a few months later that it went on sale again and everybody was doing like best spring and summer palettes or some such type of video. And so many people were mentioning this that at that point I was like, you know what? I can't stop thinking about this thing. So I'm going to get it. This is such a beautiful palette. Now there are some shades in here definitely that haven't been very easy for me to use. I've noticed that certain textures I struggle with, but I love the look of them afterwards so much that I guess it's worth the effort. This is another palette I just can't wait to do more looks with because there's so many, so many possibilities with this thing. And I think that's why I really, really like this palette. It's soft and gorgeous, but yet you can also do color. What can I say? It's a special one. Okay, speaking of special, even though I did not know Mel Thompson personally by any means, I have watched her for years and I know all of us in the beauty community were so stunned to learn of her passing in 2021. And this is a palette she created with Sydney Grace. And this is a palette that I will cherish. It's a phenomenal palette. Like this palette, the quality, the color story, the possibility possibilities of this palette. It is just absolutely beautiful. I still have so many looks in mind for this palette and I am so, so thrilled that I have it. I'm so grateful that I have it. And this is my number three. And then we have number two and number one. And honestly, it just depends on which day you ask me. These, these could have been a tie. And I think the only reason my number one palette is my number one palette is because, well, I guess we'll get to it. Let's talk about my number two palette. This was the very first palette I bought after my no buy year. I bought this in January of 2021. This was a collaboration 
collaboration between Agnelli Caniquist and uh, Kaleidos. And this palette is super special for so many reasons. First of all, I love Angie and I have met her in real life in New York back in 2019. Second of all, I have always wanted to try Kaleidos eyeshadows because I've been hearing her and other people rave about them for so long. Third, this color story. This color story is like nothing else I have because while I really admire everybody who is into indie makeup and creates gorgeous looks, I don't have the money to be buying every single indie palette. It's like nothing, nothing else I have. And you know, I was thinking the other day, well, how is it that I am okay spending money on more mainstream brands and I don't really have a lot of indie. I don't have a lot of these creative, incredible color stories. And I think this is extra special and even a lot of those. But in general, I've always wanted to try more indie, but it's expensive if you really think about it. By the time you pay for the palette and the shipping and then you have to pre-order it. So you have to have the time and the patience to do it at a certain moment of the day and night and hour and second. I'm not that person. I don't have that kind of time, money, or patience. And with a lot of these other palettes, I was looking over some of the more expensive ones that I've showed you today. I have been so lucky to get them either as giveaway prizes or as gifts, or I've been lucky to find them on a super steep discount at like TJ Maxx, like the Marc Jacobs palettes, which originally were like some crazy price, like $49, but there's no way I would have paid $49 for those. So it takes a really special release to get me to actually pay full price and be okay with shipping costs and all of that. And this was definitely for me one of those releases. Now having a personal or very tiny personal connection to Angie of course helped in my case. The packaging, I just loved everything about this palette. But most importantly, I have loved using this palette. I have absolutely adored using this palette. I've done several videos with this palette. I think my first and only live stream I've ever done was with this palette. It's just, it. it's gorgeous and it has such a unique color story that is not scary not not intimidating it's not intimidating at all like you can take just two shades and create a look with this you can go in rows the quality is fantastic those dark mattes are incredible i'm not usually one for like super toppery shades i do like a punch to my uh metallics and shimmers but these because they have so many matching mattes, you can just do so. I, I love this palette. I really do. I love this palette. And the more I look at it and the more I talk about it, I'm like, well, should I have put this at number one? I don't know. I don't know. As I said, these, they, it's basically a tie. Like for me, if you ask me one day, what was my favorite palette of 2021? I won't hesitate and tell you it's this. And then another day I will say, well, it's the next one. Now granted, the next one didn't release in 2021 like this one did. In fact, I think the only ones I have that released in 2021 are all of those Wet n Wild palettes, the ColourPop Lush Life and this one. Am I forgetting any? You guys tell me, but I, I think that's it. I don't think I have that many like brand brand new palettes as far as when they released. Just the fact that they were new for me. Number one. Those of you that know, know there's one palette you haven't seen me talk about yet. I've used it recently on camera even. It's my Natasha Denona Metropolis palette. Why do I love this thing so much? Well, first of all, I really love the greens in here. I really love a few of the more neutral uh, shimmers. I really love some of the mattes in here. Some of the really warm tone shades, I love the quality of, but it's not going to be something I reach for all the time because I like warm shades, but like, in small doses. I'm, I'm more of a neutral or colorful person, at least right now. I love this palette because it's great quality. It's a great color story. Natasha Denona has fantastic shadows and the more I use them, the more I understand that. But even more than that, I love this palette for what it represents. It was a gift. It was a gift from two people I met through the YouTube community. It was a gift during a very difficult time in my life that brought me such joy because I really didn't expect it. It just represents all the g good things that me starting YouTube has brought into my life. And that's new friendships, 
even if it's with people I have never met so far in real life. And it's um, taking the time to myself to do something I had wanted to for many, many years prior to actually starting the channel. It's an outlet for me to share my makeup love uh, because I don't have really any people in my daily life, in my close circle that feel as strongly about makeup and especially eyeshadow as I do. I don't have anybody else that is this obsessed with all of these colors and textures. I mean, most people in my real life think that I am absolutely insane for owning as much makeup as I do. And while they might be right, at least here I have a circle of friends that understand because we are all equally crazy in a good way. This palette is just, it's special to me. I don't think I can like remove the feelings associated with this palette ever really i think it's great that it also just happens to be a fantastic palette that i keep reaching into and using all the time so i guess if we were going just based on that it would still be my number one because this is the palette i've used the most i think out of every single palette i talked about today just on that alone it deserves to be in that spot but it's it's a lot more than that to me it really is. It's a lot more than that to me and I am um, I am so grateful to have it. Not because it's a physical item that I had lusted after for several years before I got my hands on it, but because of everything I feel when I pick up this palette because of everything it makes me think about. It makes me think about the wonderful people I've met through this platform. Um, it makes me think about how much fun I've had recording videos. It makes me excited for continuing to do YouTube even amidst everything else crazy happening in my life. It's just one that will always be very special to me. So, so yeah, this is my number one of 2021. And with that, we got through it. <sighs> oh my gosh, now everything, I had everything laid out so nice and neat from 24 to one. And now of course everything is in disarray. I would love to hear what was your number one of 2021 and i also kind of would love to hear what was the worst palette that you tried in 2021 i'm always that person <laughs> i do like to know what people don't like just as much as i like to know what people do like so i would love it if you would let me know down below your absolute least favorite and your utmost most favorite palette with that we should wrap things up because it's been a long one thank you so so much for sticking through this thank you so much for being here if you are finding me for the first time well then i don't know if you're still watching me but if you are please do consider subscribing i'd love to have you back and other than that thank you all so so much for being here for all your support throughout the two years that i have been on youtube um i'm so grateful and i can't wait for what's to come and in the meanwhile i hope that you're all continuing to stay safe and healthy to take care of yourselves and those around you and i can't wait to see you in my next video Bye guys.